Hey guys, so I want to give an update on this knife right here. So I just watched a guy, uh, a video of a guy who posted a video of this knife seven years ago after he's worn it for 12 years. So he's, he's owned this knife for a very long time and hasn't really posted any updates. But, this is the Buck 192. And, uh, in his video, his sheath, it had a rivet right here. Now, this one, you, as you can see, it's sewn, like, all the way around. It's sewn. Um, I have a little bit of wear here from, you know, wearing it literally every day. Um... And I got this knife because I was looking for the 119. They didn't have it. And I saw this and I was like, well, what about that? And he was like, it's a good, it, it's a good knife. So I got it. And I'm going to show you. So when you, when you have this knife, whether it's on, on your belt or not, you usually have to use this method you use your finger and he even said that in his video you use your finger to deploy it uh and yeah you can see i've used it a little bit i actually used it today <laughs> and it surprised me it really did um and like i said in my last video on this i, I use this for cutting food I, I use it for cutting everything it needs to be cleaned before I use it for food. But, yeah, I mean, this thing, those are not, like, permanent scratches. Those are just from uh, recent use. But this thing, it's, I really have grown to love it. And a lot of the other videos, they, they complain about how slick this handle is. And it feels slick. Yeah, I mean, it definitely feels slick to the touch. But once you put your hand on it, again, like I said in my last video, this knife is not going anywhere. I'm pulling it both ways. It's not moving. It's not moving. Like, it's just not. Um, you can see right there, Buck 192 Plus USA. Um, the sheath haven't had any problems with that and also I I have another sheath that I bought I bought for another knife for scout carry for the the times that I want to uh, and it works for this knife so if I want to carry this knife scout carry I can um, very solid snap buck branded good stitching like this is a good knife, but I just want to tell you about my experience today, earlier today. Now, I've had other knives. Yeah, I really need to clean this. But I've had other knives that I thought were really good. Like, they, were, I, they felt pretty sharp and, you know, long blades and everything. But... They wouldn't cut through a rope. And this thing today, I literally, I could not get a strap, a four inch strap off of a winch, off of a portable winch. If you're a flat better, you know what that is. I was tugging on it. I could not make that thing move. I just gone through, you know, snow and salt and everything. It just, it wouldn't budge. But I, I found out if I pulled it one way, it would come out. But that's not the way I needed it to come out. I needed it to come out the other way. So I was like, I got my buck. And when I started, I literally, I just put a little bit of pressure on this thing. And it cut through like a razor blade. And I was like, oh, okay. So I, I got the strap off and... Uh, pulled it through and it worked like this knife and I even had a guy 
at church come up come up to me and asked me he's like hey is that a buck I was like yeah that's a buck he's like I have that knife and it's a beautiful knife and it really is a beautiful knife you can see some wear there like I use this knife I use this uh the one thing the only thing I do not like about this knife is this part right here this this gap right here now they say it's a choil and it's it's probably there for sharpening reasons but a choil is something that you put your finger there for and I have skinny fingers so I doubt that's the case because I never have to do this with this knife I anything I have to do I can do just like this with this knife it's a good size it's not too big it's not too small but my problem with this space right here is when I am cutting through stuff and I go too far this way and I try to come back, it catches right there and it won't cut because that little part right there is not sharp. So it just catches and I have to readjust in order to go back. So for this knife, I just have to learn where my stopping point is and you know it'll it'll be good but i mean you can see some wear and tear on here and uh but you know like i said that other guy and you can see i mean there's some scratches through here on on his video there's some scratches through here from you know multiple sharpenings i mean he had that thing at that point for over 12 years um and that was seven years ago and that knife looks just like this knife the only difference is the sheath I think this sheath is kind of upgraded um, because I mean his his has the pivot here and I have a sheath with a pivot it's actually a, a, a K bar a couple K bars that I have they have a pivot or a, a, a rivet here and that rivet tends to you know shake loose and stretch and everything and this thing it's I mean it's double threaded I think that's double threaded yeah it looks double threaded all the way through so I don't think that's going anywhere it is pivoted here and you know again like I said you can see I've I, I wear this thing um, and I will say when I got this one his didn't have the insert mine did and I took the insert out because I I want the sheath to form to the blade. That's just my personal opinion. I I'm I know the 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 insert is there to protect the sheath, but I don't see why this would need to be protected, considering the blade is this side, and I, I just I don't know it, probably just to keep the shape of the original sheath I didn't like it so I took it out a um, little scratch there and it says 191 but this is a 192 and I'm really 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 liking this this knife I've sharpened it once and I didn't sharpen it because it needed to be sharpened because it was sharp enough but it just wasn't as sharp as I wanted it to be at that time and I had already cut through some stuff and so I sharpened it one time and I've used this knife since then quite a bit and it hasn't failed me yet I mean you look at that handle and this this you know the butt and the hilt brass and the guy on the other one said that this is black rubber and I watched another video that said this was onyx or black onyx walnut so I don't know I'll have to check the website for that but that blade or the blade that handle is gorgeous and it's a full grip and then some I mean and like I said in the other video, the curves are in all the right places as far as your hand. So you've got 
one knuckle here and one knuckle there and these these don't really matter but just that little I mean it's very minuscule you can't even really see it but it's there and it's right where it needs to be like this and I'm gonna put it this way so this right here it's a little bit squared off I mean it's rounded but it's almost squared so it fits it locks in I mean it's not going anywhere and the other guy said you know he's skinned deer with this and he's had he's a mechanic and he's used this thing with oil and blood on his hands and it doesn't go anywhere and I tend to believe him um, I used it today I had goat skin club uh, gloves and they're okay it's kind of hard to explain they're smooth but it's goat skin and if you've ever used I mean leather in, in anything when, when it heats up it it tends to stick a little bit better but you know it was 70 degrees outside so take that how you want but I pulled this out with my goat skin gloves and I was holding it and I I literally I just just like that I mean right through that strap and I did not expect that I I expected to work through it but yeah this thing that's I'm really impressed by it so I wanted the 119 I got the 192 the, the uh, vagrant wait not vagrant what's this one called um, it'll come to me but it's the 192 and uh, like uh, the grip is gorgeous I'll show you the, the prettier side of it <laughs> like it's pretty guys and uh, the blade needs to be cleaned up but it's still sharp it's still really sharp just while I've been sitting here holding it it's you know sliced me up a little bit um, and not applying any pressure so it stays sharp it's 420 HC steel so it's not high quality steel but buck does what's called what is it a, a uh, um, boss heating or something like that but it's 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 a good heating treatment so it keeps the steel nice and strong but it's not hard to sharpen at all didn't take me much to sharpen this thing at all um, and it has kept its edge pretty fairly so far and I don't imagine it's going to be that hard to resharpen if I need to. Um, yeah, I highly recommend this little guy. I mean, it's it's not as aggressive looking as the 119, but it works. Everybody, every bit is good. It it might not if if you're an outwoodsman or outdoorsman. Um, it might not do, you know, the sticking as much as you want to, um, the batoning, sorry, the batoning might, might not do that, but I've seen videos with this where people are doing bushcraft with this, just like, you know, um, feathering and, you know, just making kindling and just fine cuts on wood. And this thing works just great for that. And so after I got this, I really started to appreciate it more. Because I realized it's it's a well-rounded knife. It really is. It's People use it for skinning. It's made as a skinner. It's a skinner. But it also does, you know, bushcraft, bushcrafting stuff. Um just all around outdoor stuff. I've cut um, paracord with this with ease, butter knife. Um, 
I've done I've, I've cut food with this I've cut meat with it I've cut fruit with it um, I've cut rope with it I've cut straps with it and oh I had to cut a tarp with it you know those truckers rolling down the road with those flappy tarps that are all out of control yeah I've cut tarps with this with ease like with ease and I still haven't sharpened it since all that I literally I sharpened it pretty much when I first got it I think I cut through a rope or something and then I sharpened it because it wasn't as sharp as I wanted it to be and so since then I've cut all those things food fruit straps tarps like I've and I still haven't sharpened it and it's still I mean just making this video where that little right there that little I mean it's a tiny little thing but just me holding it like this right here and turning it around I mean it's still sharp guys so yeah highly recommend this um, now I, I would like this I, I mean I wouldn't mind if it came all the way to the hilt the blade to the hilt but I know that they do that for like sharpening purposes and probably like legal purposes in some states but you really don't need this choil to, to get a grip on it because you don't I really I've never needed to like oh I need to grip up on this because if I need to I can just right here like the only reason I can see for this is for sharpening purposes and even that kind of makes it a little bit difficult just because if it's, if it's a full blade you can just start from here and sharpen down but now you gotta figure out okay because my sharpening method I have uh, a sharp maker from spider co i have a sharp maker so now you have this like you know this 20 degree angle and now you got to figure out where you got to put the blade so you can't start from the hilt you got to start okay right here so am i getting this tip all the way to this tip so i mean it's you learn the feel you get it i've i figured it out but at first you're like uh I'm missing you know I'm not getting far enough back or I'm going too far forward so I just kind of wish they would do something about that however this knife this particular knife has been in production for decades so I'm not gonna fault them for that because maybe they don't need to change maybe I just need to learn how to sharpen better <laughs> and uh, but yeah, and I will say when I was cutting earlier today, I didn't have that problem because I was doing a forward cut. So instead of cutting back, I was cutting here and then just restarting, cutting here, cutting here. Now, if you're skinning, you might want to, you know, start here and go up. But even then, you're not going to go over this, this point here and snag on anything. You're just going to, you know, just slowly cut up so I mean take that for what it is if that's my only complaint on this knife then I mean I'll keep it around like I really I, I carry this thing every day every day and people say that you know when they first get the the knife that the leather sheath it, it has a chemical smell to it and I will say that yes that is the dye that they use the, uh, the 119s have the same thing. I, probably all of them do. The sheaths are made in Mexico. Um, and they are dyed. So there is a kind of a chemical smell to them. But after time, that smell fades away. Um, and I really don't smell it anymore. I mean, it smells like leather now. Just use it. I mean, you can see it's been used and like I said like what a month you know and just it's wearing very nice and 
I mean, I really, I wear this thing every day. Every day. Wear it to church. Like I said, that guy <laughs> complimented me at church. So, um, yeah, I recommend it. It is the Buck 192, despite what that says, it's the 192. Um, yeah, so if you're looking for a fixed blade knife, it doesn't sit too high on the hip, but it doesn't sit too low because I have knives that are like way up here and to draw them, it's like you gotta pull your arm all the way up just to clear the sheath. Um, and this one sits a little bit lower, but it's not super low. So yeah, this is, and that, I mean, it's not, it's not getting out of that sheath. So very well-made leather sheath, very well-made American made knife. Um, and the steel is not like top quality steel, but the heat treat on it is like superb. So it holds an edge and it's easy to sharpen. So what more can you ask for? Because there's super steels out there that will hold an edge forever, but when you try to sharpen it, it's, it's just a hassle to sharpen. And this, it's super easy to sharpen. So, I mean, it's beautiful. I love it. I'll keep it. <laughs> so, like I said, there's the rivet on the top one. But this is, you know, fully sewn all the way through. And they probably did that because through the years of having it, they're like, well... We've noticed the rivets coming loose because this is a major part of, you know, wear and tear. So we need to fix that, and that's what they did. So, and I see that already with my K-bars. Like, I've got K-bars that I've had for, you know, about the same time as this. And those rivets are already making me nervous because this rivet right here that they have... I mean, it's wobbling around, and eventually, I mean, leather stretches. We all know that, and I, just, I, I don't know. And also, my K-bars, for some reason, I cannot get sharp. I just can't. I use them, I try to sharpen them, and I cannot get them sharp. This one, I sharpened it in less than five minutes with, you know, the, the sharpener that I use for everything. And, um, and it's held its edge. So, I mean, I know K-Bar has a, a, you know, reputation behind it. And I still support them. And maybe I'm just, I don't have the right angle for them. But this one, it, for me, it's easy to sharpen. I can maintain it. I've also heard, you know, because this is brass, and we all know that brass patinas, just like copper, which is kind of why I like copper and brass, because they, they change. But on something like this, you want to keep it polished. So if you notice it getting dirty, you know, polish it up. Um, you know, make it look pretty. Because the other guy said that he just let his get dirty, and when he went to, to polish it up, there were actually like, you know, nicks and stuff in it from the patina. Because he was polishing off the patina, which, you know, so you're taking that off. You're taking off the brass. But uh, also interesting fact about copper and brass that I recently learned. They are antimicrobial, which means they, they keep bacteria away. So, there you go. That's something to know. I have a pen that's made out of copper just for that reason. Well, not just for that reason. I, literally, the reason I got the copper pen was because of patinas. <laughs> and it changes colors over, over time. But the, 
you know, with these trying times, people are into antibacterial stuff. So, hey, if that's your thing, you don't want to catch a virus or bacteria or anything, get some brass. There you go. But anyway, there you go. Like, I just think this is a beautiful knife. Just wanted to give you an update. It's a very long update. Wow. Sorry, guys. But there you go. It's beautiful.